So Tudor actually released another new watch this year and made no noise whatsoever about it. Hi everyone and welcome to Saluso and yes today we're talking about a new Tudor and I don't mean the Black Bay 58, I don't mean just another color variation, I mean an actual new watch. It's the 1st of August as I'm filming this and about a week ago Tudor released what they called the Royal, an integrated bracelet day date watch that they made pretty much no noise whatsoever about. If you look on YouTube there's very very few channels covering it and there's a very good reason for it. This watch is only going to be available in four markets. It's only going to be available in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. Now I'll explain a little bit later as to why they're targeting that specific market, but first let's look at what the watch actually is. So design wise, there's a few very distinct cues that make this royal stand out. There's the Roman numerals, the day date specifically that's laid out like a Rolex day date. It's got this sort of flat integrated bracelet that's got sort of Jubilee style to it. It does look very Tudor, especially that bezel finish. It's something that you see in a lot of their sort of 90s and sort of early 2000s pre Black Bay era Tudor. So it's an interesting design exercise and even more when you consider that Tudor's designs are nearly always influenced by their previous models from Tudor or previous models from Rolex. And this, in my view at least, has a lot of parallels with the Rolex Oyster Quartz. Yeah, Rolex actually made a quartz watch. Starting in the late 70s, right up until 2003, Rolex had the Oyster Quartz, which was available in a date just format or in a day date format. And both of them featured an integrated case with an integrated bracelet, the one with the date only, featured this sort of integrated Jubilee style where it wasn't as curvaceous as the Jubilee style bracelet, but it had the same sort of pattern of links. It really evoked that sort of feeling. And in the case of the day date one, they had a variation on the president bracelet, but again, sort of integrated and a little bit flatter. So I see a lot of parallels between that, but bringing it back to the Royal, they'll be releasing 52 variants of this watch, 52. So if you're an avid Tudor collector and you really love the Tudor Royal, you can have one for every week of the year. When you break it down to the fact this is gonna be available in 41, 38, 34 and 28 millimeter variants, all with different dial colors available as all steel or in two-tone. You do the math, you can come up with a lot of variations to it and obviously they want to make sure every combination is available. Now I should say the day date version is only available on the 41 millimeter and that comes from an ET8 2834 which is of course the day date version of the ET8 2824. So an interesting move by Tudor moving back to outsourced movements. You know, they'd been riding this wave with uh, the Black Bay collection, with the in-house movements. They even had it in some others, including the North Flag, which is their other integrated bracelet watch. It does seem a bit odd that they've gone back to the outsourced movements. But the good thing is that Tudor has priced it accordingly as well. The price ranges on this watch are from 2000 US up to 3750 if you want it two-tone and with diamonds on the indices. So in typical Tudor style, regardless of what's going on on the inside, it's extremely, extremely good value. And when you consider that this watch also has 100 meters water resistance, Tudor build quality, in my opinion, it looks good, makes you wonder what's Omega thinking? Because now we have to talk about why this watch is only available in four countries, specifically in Asia. And that's because this style of watch, not really the full on AP integrated, but this sort of more curvaceous integrated bracelet watch, does extremely well in Asia and Omega has proven that with the Constellation. The Asian market is one of its best markets for the Constellation despite the fact it doesn't sell as strong in Europe or in the United States. And the reason why Omega should be worried is because they sell the Constellation for $6,000 and that's the entry level price. Obviously it has a manufacturer movement, it's Meta certified, it's Omega, it presents itself as a bit more luxurious versus Tudor as a brand. There's a lot of other reasons contributing as to why it would be more expensive. But you still have to think, this is a watch that can come in at 50% of the price easily and it's still a good looking watch and features a day day complication. So it'd be interesting to see how this fares in that market competing against Omega and then taking it to another level, if Tudor decides to bring this to the rest of the world, how is that going to affect the integrated bracelet watch market in general? Obviously it's not going to take away any business from AP or Protec, 
But what about something like a Maurice Lacroix, which also costs about 2,000 US on the entry point? If you had the choice, would you be getting that Maurice Lacroix or would you get a Tudor? They're both outsourced movements, they're both good looking watches, versatile watches, with a decent amount of water resistance and with integrated bracelets. Be an interesting comparison to say the least. But in any case, that's all we really know about the Tudor Royal for now. Because it's such a limited release, Tudor hasn't released a lot of information. I had to dig a lot to actually find it on their website. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a joke, I thought it was a rumor, until I actually saw it hidden on their website, and then you hit a few error screens after you try and click through it. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this new Tudor? Do you think that they should bring it to the rest of the world? Would you buy this instead of, say, a Maurice Lacroix Icon or an Omega Constellation? or some of those other alternatives to the Royal Oak and the Nautilus? I'd love to know your impressions in the comments below. And of course, if you want to see more pictures of watches and infographics of watches, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to see more videos of watches, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can see the latest video when it comes up. In any case, though, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.